Hey, hello everybody, I'm jo here, I'm John August with, and um, we're at the uh, Sydney Electric Vehicle Expo. Yeah. I'm, here with, I'm here with Bruno and Damien and they're going to talk about electric vehicles and, and gadgets and power and stuff like yeah. that. So I'll, I'll leave these two gentlemen to it. All right, all right, we've got a microphone here. <laughs> I hope it, hopefully it's not clipping. Hi Damien. So Hello, how you what you got here, man? <laughs> right, so... This is a hill climb by car, isn't it? Like something really powerful, is it? Yep, so last year we were running a, a Hooper with two AC50 motors. This year what we're running is a 450 kilowatt fully unlocked Tesla setup mm. with a 450 kilowatt vehicle. <laughs> so we basically got a, a large power motor. Yeah, All right, what we got here, man? So this is the big Tesla motor, so it's the large drivetrain. So this is the motor, this is the inverter, this is the reduction drive. The yep. Are you not using the differential? Oh, yeah, we are. Yet. Yeah, no, we just haven't got the drive shafts in. It's um, flipped upside down. Yeah, so basically what we had to do is flip it upside down and modify it. So the initial uh, Tesla picks up its oil from the bottom of the, uh, you'd call it a sump, but it's just a tiny little reservoir. So the reality is, is we have to crack the case open, modify it, run an external pump to be able to run it upside down. But in this scenario, having the weight behind the rear wheels would have been very bad for handling. So by moving the weight to the front and low, um, it means we've been able to kick up, kick up sooner with the diffuser to actually create more downforce. And it's moved the weight inside of the, inside of the wheels for a better handling. Awesome. So the main reason why you flipped up so down is just to help with the cooling. No, no, it's all about handling. Handling? Handling. All about handling. mechanical grip and handling. Oh, when, you, when you're designing a car, if you want good handling characteristics, you want all of the weight in between the wheels and as close to the center line as possible. Okay, so you get the driver, uh, like weight and like battery weight, motor weight. That's right. So you kind of like just try to balance around it. The, the reality is, is we should have a fairly decent side to side split. It should almost be perfect. And the reality is we'll have about a 60-40 um, uh, rear to front Wide split. Yeah. That's right, and then under braking, you end up with a 50 50 through the corner. Oh, yeah, it's right, yeah, because the weight shifts. That's correct. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah. and we're running the same same sort of style with a, a mono shock at the rear, um, but basically, this allows the vehicle to sit flat in the back end. Um, oh, right. Because so of the no amount of, that's right, because of the amount of downforce, the reality is, is we'll probably have both boots on the ground at all times. <laughs> That's amazing race tyre. Look at the size it. of this, man. Ooh. That's it. 12 inch wide Avons. Oh, grippy, eh? <laughs> yep. So we only get about three months, if that, depending on how many runs. <laughs> Dashboard thing. So basically, this is the EV control units that we got from um, EV West, and basically, this controls all of the parameters and setting in the Tesla motor. Um, so basically they've, they've gone to the effort to actually have a plug and play scenario where basically this plugs directly into the inverter um, and it is one literally cable. one cable into the inverter, one plug into the back of this, a wire to your throttle, put your two power wires in and away you go. Happy days. Happy days. And you, you can control all the parameters from inside of that um, and it literally is just your touch screen slide and play. That's awesome because the race cars they normally have like even a Formula One car they have like a on the steering wheel they have they, I don't know, like 20 buttons and things and like yep. LEDs and things. Yep. So this actually makes life simpler. Absolutely. Yeah I don't know if you're gonna be no, no, you, 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 go, oh, wow. you won't really have time to go changing too many of those just things. Just set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. The, the advantage to the electric racing is you turn up, you get in the car, you drive and you there's Plug not it in. much de -de 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 -de. you That's might right. be controlling what like regen up and down no not really because at the end of the day it will mess with the biasing um, so the brake biasing knob is just here mm. um, so basically you can adjust your your front oh, to right. rear bias um, but the reality is is your, your regen will actually cause you a little bit of drama with your your biasing mm. um, set or forget that's right you just run, do I run like a few like this yep yeah. that's oh, it oh. so oh, yeah. Life is much simpler with electric. That's it. No gear shifting, no, no, like, ah, oh, man. No, <laughs> push and go because the throttle is all about torque control. Oh, man. Woo! <laughs> um, uh, deals with all of the parameters and settings that are in the inverter in the Tesla. Um, that's what comes from EV West, and they basically have, have 450 worked. 450 kilowatts. 450 kilowatts, and. A lot of power, man! 1,000 newton meters, as far as I know. <laughs> so. 
So the chassis is supposed to handle all this. Yeah, so, right. so the, all the, the numbers are okay, right? Yeah, <laughs> so we, we've probably over-engineered it a little, a little more than we need to uh, in the event that we end up doing normal track runs. So the reality is, is it'll spend most of its life on a hill climb. Um, hence the uh, remove as much weight as we actually can. Look at these um, tires, man. They're awesome, man. Eh? That's it. Right, so what we got here at the front? So this looks like a like amazing, proper racing shocks, like a Formula One tires, Okay. Right? So these particular shocks are a titanium and magnesium shock that actually come out of a Benetton F1. So Sounds really cheap, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, 10, 15 bucks, I'm not sure, I can't remember. That's okay. Um, so basically this is this this bar here actually takes control of your this replaces what would normally be a sway bar. So this rocks backwards and forwards. We have a rising rate on our rockers, so basically once the aero kicks in we then get back to normal suspension. Uh, in the event that we find that we don't have enough uh, control over it, we then just add the damp individual. individual dampness to basically deal with well, each, side. each side. Yeah. So basically all of that all of that scenario lightens up quite substantially so sway bar becomes extremely small um, all of the components are minimized as much as possible So hang on so did you weld this thing yourself yeah. you welder So so I did most of the chassis well I did all of the chassis <laughs> um, and quite a few of the components uh, Phil the owner and driver of the car um, he did the suspension arms you um, TIG welding? Yes, TIG welding. So, Beautiful. Schmink. Yep. Uh, is this all like what? Like steel? So thi this is all chromoly tubing. Yeah. Um, this is this is uh, ERW RHS in a in a latticework configuration with uh, aluminium sheeting. So stress structure exactly the same as you would if you had a Clubman race car. So space frame chassis all the way through. So it's not a dodgy backyard project. Is awesome. That's right. Properly, like <laughs> everything has to be A1 when you're dealing with someone who's traveling at 260 kilometers an hour. Safety is everything. Oh, yeah. Right, what we got here so this is the battery compartment, right? So, yep. nice fridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, at, eh? at the moment, we um, we didn't have time to have the, the top finished off, so it will actually have. Um, uh, active cooling for the BMS. Oh. The reality is is the lipo pack that's in here generates very very little heat so we don't actually need to cool it. Uh, we will actually have a heating pad underneath to get it up to temperature for racing. Um, the reason we went with the stainless steel box is because the reality is is it can contain the fire of a lipo. Uh, we don't expect to have any problems because we have over spec the battery to be able to dish out far more current than the motor can ever, ever deliver. Uh, we inset the actual lid of it because by the time it's got the venting in it, the easiest way to control a, a battery issue and a critical fail is to take a 20 litre bucket of water, pour oh, it into the top of the tray. Looks like a container. Yeah. That's right, instantly floods the battery, oh. battery becomes safe. So up the back here we have all the contactors. Um, so all, this, uh, all the power, high voltage power, contactors and the only way to access this this here is to remove this and switch the isolation switches before you can get into the module so so you're never actually being able to work on it at 400 volts just one thing yep. um, people think it's a crazy idea to put water in a battery in case of a fire right water yep. right yep. so it's just like that's a stupid idea but powder extinguishes have a tendency to ignite when an arc is present. What happens when you put the water in is it does two things. Not only thermal does it runaway, thermal runaway, it cools it down, it. and it also discharges the battery because it shorts the battery. Yes. So it not only drains the power out, but at the same time controls the heat. Yeah, a lot of like Danny Ripper will say, oh no, we squeeze water inside the battery. Like, no, not inside, like through all cells. That's like, right. That sounds crazy. It's like, no, no, no. That's the only thing, you just keep on pumping. Like That's get a right. hose and just keep on pumping. Keep it going. So if like, you want to buy something like that, how much it will cost me? So like, pretty easy to make. So e how much? Easy is an interesting word to use there, but no. Okay, um, so so from, from design to hitting the track with, the, with everything on it, we're basically looking at, the reality is, is component wise, you've got a basically $100,000 worth of vehicle, 150 built. 
Yeah. But labour, yeah. Yeah, that's right. The labour, there was just on the chassis alone, there was about 105 hours, but the reality is, is there's a lot of design that has to actually go into it first to get your geometry right for what you're doing. Plus, so how long did you make this, like how much time did you spend making So currently, to now, like. currently to this point, we're at about three weeks. Two um, weeks? Yeah, three weeks. Did you so, wild this in three weeks? Yeah. No. This got in the trailer at uh, the morning we had to bring it here. That's another world record. Man. <laughs> three weeks. Yeah, so three weeks. Um, what? Uh, the reality is, is we actually had designed the chassis to go under a different body. Um, if we had to do it again, we probably wouldn't do it quite the same way. Uh, because of that, we didn't actually have any of the um, the shock design or anything like that set up in CAD before we started, so that did take up a decent amount of time trying to work out the logistics of what we were going to do. So, but the reality is, is I mean, this is what I do, this is my job, you want a race car, come to me. Oh. Wow, man, that feels awesome. <laughs> it's missing the steering wheel at the moment. No, 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 it's Fruit Ninja. Let's say oh, steer. Okay. Thought control. Yeah. No, we, we literally got it running at 10 a.m. Or basically got it rolling 10 a.m. before we had to have it in the trailer to come here. Awesome. So. Oh, yeah. All the stuff there. Yeah, cool. Yep. Oh, man, i got to come to Canberra. Sorry. I have to drive down and see this car, man. Oh, yeah. So we're going to finish the video. Yep, I think that's fine. I'm good. Yeah, so much power, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>